What I decided to do is to swap the original back glass of the Legends Pinball Virtual Pinball Cabinet and make it my own. We know that this cabinet is quite small. In order to compensate for how small the uh, actual cabinet is, I decided to build a bigger back box and it will even fit my computer inside. I even gave it a, a nice rounded edge. Here you see the uh, little hole that I'm going to mount Arno's lights, their LEDs, and uh, we've got a hole in the middle where I can fish the wire. Here I can fit all my components and I will have uh, some shelves to put my amps. So I'm going to have a lot of room to put extra stuff. Now that uh, the cabinet is done, uh, we need to paint it. In order to paint, I'm going to use this gun is the Graco Airless 360. The beauty about this gun is you do not need to mix your paint. It's actually will take any kind of paint really or stain that you want to put in in the container and uh, you just squish the air out and it will actually spray quite nicely. The first product I'm going to use to prime is the Bullseye 123 primer. It is a little more money, but it blocks stains, it blocks anything that could basically ruin your paint job and it actually dries in one hour. So that's the container. So I don't know how much I'm gonna need, but I'm gonna fill it like to three quarter. And you can switch the, uh, the direction. So now I'm gonna do vertical. And there's a speed for high or low. I'm going to put it on high. Now I'm ready to paint, it's dry. And I've opted for a cabinet furniture melamine finish. So it's supposed to be good against stain and they say superior durability. All right, so we're going to pour some of that here. I'm gonna go, well, three quarter. I'm going to do another quick coat. I mounted the LCD. I simply measure where the screen was going. I got a two by four that's actually mounted really, really flush, as you can see by the, the trail over here. Uh, that holds my centerpiece in place. And here, there. I actually mounted the speakers on each side. So this is the vent for the fan that I'm going to install. So 
we've got a nice fit. So now I'm gonna use Legends Pinball 16 inch LCD like monitor. I'll put it here. I've got the slot already cut in for the ribbon cable. I'm gonna use the uh, two sided tape to mount this. I'm going to reuse the 15 inch monitor uh, that's part of the Legends Pinball and embed it in my new design. Uh, we're gonna need to remove that plexiglass. You're gonna open the back box and you're gonna remove the two speakers. So you're gonna remove the four screws for the speaker grill. Then you're gonna remove that. Third step is the tricky one. You're gonna need a suction cup. So the suction cup that I use, uh, mine is like an industrial one, you are going to stick that on the screen. It's, uh, it's held in place with sticky tape, like really strong sticky tape. So take your time, pull hard, but consistently, and just apply the pressure, and eventually you'll do four, four corners, and that will come right out. That will expose the 15 inch LCD monitor, and uh, the ribbon cable, now mine was connected on my VIBS board. Uh, this is the small ribbon cable that will be connected to here. So disconnect by lifting the tab and removing it, and then the monitor will be free. Now, the monitor, just be very careful because it's being held in place with sticky tape as well, and you're not forcing it to break it, and it will come right out. Look how thin that thing is. It's unbelievable. So that's kind of going to be the layout of the new back box. Five LEDs at the top. That's my 28 inch insignia. I had it in my old cab, so I'm gonna reuse it. The two speakers, this, that's gonna be for the fan, the dot matrix. So I'm going to embed that in the back box as well. All right, so I've got the, uh... The LCD panel mounted with the sticky tape. In below, I've got the dot matrix. This portion here with a plexiglass, like a tinted plexiglass. So that's gonna hide this. So I've got the RGB in place and I've used a little glue. Uh, we could also use uh, small screws. I'm just applying a little bit of glue in the back here and I'm just pushing it in. And I'm just holding it a little bit just to hold it in place here. They're going to be just like this. There you go. Done. The five RGB lights. That's it, folks. That was a long day. It actually turned out real good. I'm, I'm actually very happy with the results. All ready for connections for the time being, guys. Cheers. I'm going to mount my strobe. These are the Arno's 12 volts flashers. These are amazing because you don't need any resistors. You don't need anything. It's all built in the light. So all you need to do is to connect it with a 12 volt and ground and then you're done. All right, so now I'm going to add a power supply outlet, uh, basically a female plug, just like this. To start with, you're gonna cut male portion of the uh, splitter. So you have a bridge from for the red wire, which is gonna be the uh, power. 
and this is the negative. It's also a bridge from this pin here to this one. So the ground of the strip, so the green is gonna come here. So the live, which is gonna be the black, is gonna come here. And this is the neutral. It's gonna be, could be a different color. Uh, could be blue or white, uh, mine is white. So the white is gonna connect here. Okay, so I've got the connectors on each one of them. Lights off, lights on, lights off. So that works. That works. So I'm going to actually mount it on this side right here. The not so perfect hole is done. <laughs> You can use your multimeter and there's a function, it's the continuity function. So if I press here and basically if I have continuity, you can hear the beep. So if I touch the first wire, so I'm getting continuity. All right, so both sides are connected and I've got the wire in the split loom. You basically fish your wires into this.
light comes on, red, green, and blue. Uh, we have five of them. They are all independent. Here I connected my fan. I've got it on actually port 11 on the rig master. And look at this. <laughs> It drives a lot of power. I got it on 24 volts. I drilled three small holes for the uh, computer LED uh, for the activity and the power. So this is quite nice. And if I press this button, it will start the computer. And power up the button at the same time. popper and I'm going to select the layout C full DMD because this is our full DMD now. DMD. This is what a full DMD looks like. I'm going to show you a few games and gameplay featuring the back box. So we got the full top screen here. That's our active back glass. And here is the full DMD. Pretty cool. That's it folks, that ends the video of building my custom back box. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Not having to bend over on the edge of a pinball machine is critical. Unfortunately, I do not have plans for this folks. I have a set of plans that I've actually designed in AutoCAD. I'll make those available on my website for free and they're for non-commercial by the way. And I gotta say I am very happy with the results. The finish is good. It's melamine. It's easy to wash. I've kept and maintained a stock using the Legends Pinball back glass basically as a full DMD now. Now my back glass is much bigger. Folks, if you have any questions, we have answers at the Discord VP chat. Uh, we have over 8,000 people, and if you get stuck, we have uh, dedicated channels for pretty much everything. And come say hi, and if you need help, or if you want to be helpful, uh, it's a great place to be. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.